YouTubers, welcome back. I have another excited tutorial for you guys. And I like to think that the tutorial that I did about five or six or so months ago that I had a part in this particular feature. And that's pretty much the extent you have as far as masks that you can animate in Premiere. Uh, they do not have any spline mask that you can create your own splines like in After Effects yet. I really hope one day that they include that into the newest versions of Premiere coming up. You hear me Adobe? I'm asking you for this. But now they've added a new feature that you can add a mask in every single layer and use a pen tool to create a custom mask and it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to show it to you guys and I like to say thank you Adobe. All right guys, now before I go ahead and give Adobe too much praise for this new great feature, I will say that it's not without its bugs. It does produce rendering artifacts from time to time. It can make your video flicker and it all depends on your clip and when it decides to render correctly. So just be aware of that. So a little trick that I like to do to help you out to make sure that you hit a long timeline that's a lot longer than this and like say 10 seconds and it's like a 30 minute like you know short movie you produce you got all your editing in there everything's running out nice you want it to go out and you have to wait for it to render and then all of a sudden you render and you see these glitches in your movie it can make you so angry that you want to throw your computer out a window and bitch him on adobe but i'll show you a little workaround what i like to do is my sequence i go to my sequence settings and it's already set up that way by default, it's going to be set up to iframe only MPEG and these two options will not be clicked. That's going to be default settings. So what you got to do to change that, I've already been there. Go to custom, make sure you have QuickTime installed on your computer. Go to QuickTime and choose H.264. And make sure maximum bit depth is on, blah, 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 whatever that said. Maximum render quality, blah, 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 whatever that said. And that way, what you want to do is uh, you want to render it out using that codec and when you export it make sure you use the exact same codec and say use preview so once you get to look all how you want to look in your timeline everything rendered out perfect you hit export and instead of rendering the whole thing again it compiles all the video together into one clip and what you see is what you're going to get so let's get off that and get more to what you guys want to see is how this new mask feature can really improve your video. So we say it has something like this, and when we want to make this pop, we want to make it look like it's kind of HDR. So what's the quickest way to do that? Quickest, easiest way to do that is to go find a adjust. Let's go shadow and highlights, and unclick this. Now this particular guy right here can produce flickering. I've already contacted Adobe, and they know that it's a problem, and hopefully they fix it. But anyways, I go to more options. It's basically a tonal range from your highlights to your shadows. And it just you can pull them out a whole bunch and pull in your um, highlights so you can do things like this. You click off and on, you can see that's a huge difference. And it kind of looks like, you know, HDR for your photos. It's pretty much the same premise. Shadows, you can pull our shadows up. And just remember that one thing about this, if it's dark and you're pulling your shadows out, you really are going to see a lot of noise. But that's not a big deal. We're just gonna play around here and have a good time with this. So let's uh, really crank this up and make it look ridiculous. And I could throw a curves on there. I'm not really gonna try to make this all super nice looking. So let's just go ahead and drop the contrast and all that up. And um, and say like when you're doing this, you know, like, yeah, man, I really like how this looks and how this looks, but damn, man, this, this brick right here is so red. So what we want to do, we can just go to a human saturation, and this is the new masking features. Notice each and every single effect will have these masks on there. So what do these do? Well, it's just like After Effects. Let's say I can just go around the house and I can choose just the house. Well, hot skippity damn. That used to be a lot of steps in um, Premiere. And uh, traditionally, when I was doing this, I would say, you know what? I am definitely not using Premiere for this. I am going to use, I'm going to go smaller, 25. I am going to use After Effects. It is not liking me because I'm using the capture software. So let's go ahead and do my best here, just bear with me. All right, so I have effectively masked the house for the most part. 
And let's go to 50%. And, but you notice if I go over here, oh wait, wait, wait. My well, little house is pretty much in the scene the whole time. So uh, that will probably work decently. But let's just go here and we'll uh, move this here, move this here, and move this guy up here. And we'll be right here. And then uh, what we can do is animate our mask. Brilliant. I love it. And let's just move this over here. Move this over here. And I can't tell you how much easier that is to do than to, uh, you know, well, it's not too hard after effects, really. You can just export your, you know, flipped after effects. It's not that big of a deal but you don't have to go to another program now just to do simple stuff like this which is excellent you know, this, I can't tell you how much time this is going to save me in the future let's make sure it tracks the house decently and uh, yeah, 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 yeah that's pretty good so what we're going to do now is uh, Let's feather it a little bit. It's all, it's all, it defaults at 10, so let's feather it a little more. You see, this is gonna be a feather line. And that is the reason why I said in your sequence settings to go ahead and make sure it says maximum bit depth, maximum render quality, because a lot of times you don't do that. You know, and the way it's supposed to work is this is gonna be where it's gonna start your feather out to nothing, but you will be able to see this little line over the whole entire thing, and it's pretty annoying at times but that tends to make it work correctly. And sometimes you have to mess with some of these settings and get it run out correctly. And that's one of those bugs that I'm sure Adobe's gonna fix, but right now it's just not quite perfect. So, and we can do our expansion, you know, all that stuff, you know, negative and positive expansion, just like in After Effects. And we will take this down right around there. That should be good. And then we'll just reduce the saturation on just the house. Oh, I can't tell you how happy I am that this is in this feature. Look at that. Beautiful. We are getting a halo here, but I'm telling you that is from the shadow and highlight feature. And if you guys know you ever done HDR photography, that's a common thing that happens in your HDR. If you want to look that way, that's fine. If not, you can go and use your levels and do a non-feather based on you know, your highlights and all that and get it differently. But, you know, we're just doing this quick just to show you these features. So that's, that's a pretty cool feature. So, uh, but let's do something else here. Let's go ahead and let's just say this is the sign that says, do not enter and you're taking video. And you're like, crap. Well, uh, I want people to know that I'm in a restricted area. So we'll just take our Let's see here, blur, well let's take a blur, whatever, you can use whatever you want, you can use a mosaic filter, which is very common, and let's pop in a fast blur, use our little circle here, drag it over, make it small, just around the sign, let's actually just go back a little more, and traditionally what you would have to do, you would have to keyframe it frame by frame, which uh, is annoying, and I would not do that in the old version of Premiere, because it just takes too much time and I would want to just punch my computer right in its face. So what we're going to do is uh, look at this mask path. We're going to hit the play button and watch what it's going to do. It is going to track it. Beautiful. That is going to save us a lot of time. Speaking of saving time, I will come back to you guys when this is done tracking and we'll do some more to it. All right, so it's done, and if you notice, it is now. If you scroll through, you think it's messing up, it's not. It's just, uh, this is trying to keep up with the refresh rate. So if you click it here, click right here, you can see it's always, and it's very nicely has it tracked that sign. And I am just very thrilled about this. And you can see right in here, it has given us a keyframe, you know, just like After Effects, you know, it's a frame by frame deal. And traditionally, you would have to go frame by frame yourself, but now you can uh, hit record or, you know, play that little thing and you can go grab a beer. And when you come back, you know, you can go ahead and do your effects like this. Say you don't want people to know you've been in this restricted area, so we're just gonna do that. 
and let's feather it a little bit. And another thing too is if you don't want to use these controls right here, you can use this to feather it. See, this is going to be the full extent to the effect, and this is where it's going to feather it on out. And like, see, it's, this slider goes to 300, but of course, you can go above and beyond that if you want to. I'm not sure what the limit is, but you can go a lot more than 300. So now, if we go ahead and look at it, look at that. Now you're not going to get arrested because no one knows that you're in a restricted area, which I'm not. But yeah, that is pretty much the gist of this uh, particular feature. It is not super new. Uh, I can't really tell you when it first came out. I think it came out in CC 2014 something. I think it's been out for like maybe like three or four months. And you know, it's a good feature and I hope this helps you guys out. And like always subscribe and I'll see you next time.